Welcome to Celebration. Thanks for joining us for another message from God's Word. Uh, I hope that you've been with us for this whole series on spiritual warfare. We're on sermon number six, so if you've just joined us or if you've been a little haphazard maybe at this, you might want to go back to the YouTube channel and pick up those other messages and listen to them. They're only about 30 minutes apiece. You've got time to do that. Uh, each sermon can stand alone, and yet they uh, are connected, obviously. Each week we've gone back to Ephesians chapter 6 uh, as we've gone through this. But so obviously we've already had five messages from this passage about being in spiritual warfare. In those messages we identified uh, our struggle as one against evil. It's a spiritual battle, and so we talked about that. Since we're fighting evil that's uh, under the influence of Satan, then we looked at Satan's schemes and learned some of the tactics that he uses so that we might be better uh, equipped and ready to fight him. We would recognize his work. We'll talk about that some today in our message on staying alert. We need to know what he's up to and who he is. Uh, then we looked at our source of strength, which of course is God, and he also empowered the spiritual weapons we looked at last week. We also talked about taking our stand, making sure that when you take a stand, it's on the Word of God, not just uh, philosophy or opinion or just ideas, but certainly on the right thing, and that's God's Word and God's principles. And so we've looked at all those things in the past, and you can go back and check out those messages if you haven't already kept current, and then uh, be aware of what the whole passage is saying. We've just taken, we've read it each week. And looked at it, but then we uh, highlight a, a spot of that and look into it a little more deeply. And so last week we talked about the weapons that we had at our disposal and still have, powered by God, but all of the uh, armor and weapons that we can have to be in these spiritual battles as we fight for the very lives and souls of the world's people, and also for our own influence and uh, uh, impact that we might have as, and our effectiveness as Christians. And so we need to fight these battles. Uh, we need to win some. Uh, so we need our armies to be in there and involved. And so we've learned about that. And so today we're going to look at just a couple of the verses because we've read them throughout the week. Because we're zooming in on the idea of staying alert. I've got the weaponry. I'm on God's side. And I know what uh, the devil's up to. But I need to be alert to that fact. And then we're also going to go out, which we haven't done too much of, and look at a passage in uh, 1 Peter. Uh, just a verse there, 5, 8, uh, because he had some of the same advice. God used both of these men, and, and Peter's advice is uh, really good because there was a time when he wasn't alert. We'll talk about that toward the end. But let's then uh, look at what the Apostle Paul says in Ephesians 6 about praying and being alert. Beginning of verse 18, he says, Pray at all times in the Spirit with every prayer and request, and stay alert in this with all perseverance and intercession for all the saints. Pray also for me that the message may be given to me when I open my mouth to make known with boldness the mystery of the gospel. For this I am an ambassador in chains. Pray that I might be bold enough in him to speak as I should. And then Peter's verse in uh, 1 Peter says, Be serious, be alert. Your adversary, the devil, is prowling around like a roaring lion looking for anyone he can devour. And so the enemy is real, and he's strong, and he's powerful, and he's out there. We have identified him in our past sermons, and we've talked about some of the tactics that he uses and he continues to use. So we're aware of these things, but are we alert? Uh, just having the knowledge makes us aware, but if we're not paying attention... If we're not, and we addressed this at the very beginning, there are a lot of people who just really don't even grasp the idea that we're in spiritual warfare. That all of these problems that we face in our world, in our communities, in our schools, in our churches, in our homes, they're not just economic problems and racial problems and education problems and child raising problems and uh, medical problems. Yes, they are, they're there and they're real. But we have problems because there's a root problem called sin, and there is evil in this world, and it is being run by, as we read before in Ephesians, go back up uh, in your Bible there and look at the very beginning where he identifies that we are not wrestling against flesh and blood, but against spiritual powers. 
And so the devil is out there, like Peter says, roaming around seeking whom he may devour. And we need to be aware of that, but also alert to see it. Just to proclaim a lion in the streets, but never look out the window, never recognize that he's on my doorstep, uh, we'll be defeated before we ever get started. Let me suggest to you three areas that I think we should get involved in because we need to be aware and alert of what's going on and, and know the fight that we're in. And so the first one I would suggest is education. I usually start them with the right letter, the same letter. This one I'm ending with the IONs there in the education. And so they'll all have that just for our memory's sake. But uh, I'm not talking about public education. Uh, it's got its own problems. And you, certainly if you've got children in the system, you need to be aware of what they're teaching and why they're teaching it and those kind of things. But I'm just talking about the general idea of education, of knowing things. Part of the reason we lose so many of our spiritual battle is we don't even know what we're doing. Just poll yourself or ask somebody else some questions about the Bible, and we are as a people, and sadly, even as Christians and as the church, so many are biblically illiterate. We don't know what it says. How can we possibly fight the enemy when we don't even know what we stand on? We don't even understand the principles of God because we've never bothered to really learn it. We let the preacher read it or the Sunday school teacher read it, and then we discuss it a little bit, try to soak some in, but we've never really read it for ourselves. I can't tell you how many times throughout my ministry I've had people ask me saying something like, well, doesn't the Bible say, and they're way off base. My answer is, no, it doesn't say that. Uh, well, that's a nice little saying, but it's not Bible. It's not what God says. And I'm thinking, why don't you know that? Why don't you know what it says? I don't mean I've got it all memorized and, and you need to do that either, but we're not familiar with what it says. I had a good friend from a different denomination tell me one time uh, in taking a Bible quiz, he said, well, I flunked the quiz because he said, I'm such and such. I won't blast that <laughs> denomination, but he said, I'm such and such, and we don't know what the Bible says. This is one of the largest Christian denominations in the world, and he said, we don't know what the Bible says. By his own admission, but I had to think about us Baptists and, uh, and evangelicals and think, you know, we don't know what it says either. We need to educate ourselves and educate our children and educate our people and educate those who are new to the faith that they might, first of all, know the truth. How can you fight against the lies and the deceits of Satan if you don't know the truth? It amazes me how people are so gullible. Uh, just put a saying out there. And if it sounds like Bible, then it's like, well, yeah. And if it is Bible, but used wrongly, taken out of context, made to say whatever you want it to say, and if we don't know the truth of that, we're defeated already. We don't have a leg to stand on if we haven't been educated in what God's Word says. And also to know the enemy, not just to know the truth, but you need to know the enemy. That's why we had a whole message on getting to know the schemes of Satan, that we might recognize what he's up to. So that we might see that that's him that's roaming in the streets out there. That we might see that that's his evil that is uh, filtered into our public education system. That we might see the evils of, uh, of our science becoming pseudoscience and venturing into faith systems and godless systems. And recognize the difference between real science and agendas. Whether you're talking about some of the current pandemic stuff or if you're talking about evolution or you're talking about some of the uh, current psychology waves, how we've thrown out everything that used to be moral and we now call, as the Bible has said all along, we now call what was good evil and what was evil is now good. And it's all based on culture and it's all based on an, uh, a current education system. I remember when I was in college, which wasn't ancient ago because I didn't go till my 30s. But I remember sitting in a sociology course, and that whole course was designed and used, and the book that we used was based on, some of you will remember this, from the Kinsey Report of the 60s, which at the time was rejected as being valid by the U.S. Senate. You don't get any more liberal than the U.S. Senate. And they didn't even accept it, and here we were 30 years later, back in the 90s, 
studying the whole course based on a, a theory and a philosophy that has since been proven as a hoax, was even done deliberately incorrectly just to promote an agenda. And the guy's standing there day after day teaching this to a bunch of 18 and 20 year olds and one 30 something year old. And I became his uh, nemesis, I guess, and I'm sure he hated class every day because he no sooner got started on the chapter than I spoke up and refuted it constantly uh, because it wasn't true. But we just send our kids to schools anyway, and we just put them in the textbooks and tell them to get good grades on stuff that's not even true, but we don't even pay attention and know. And so uh, you need to know the truth, but you also need to know the enemy so you recognize those things as being attacks from evil. Many of the movies and television shows that we watch, they're evil in intent. And even if it's not violently evil, it's the subtle stuff where it gets us to uh, practice things and think things contrary to the Word of God because it was funny or because it was entertaining or because it's just, we're just so flooded with it that we don't even recognize what the enemy's doing. He's numbing us to taking God's name in vain. He's numbing us to our language. He's numbing us to the sexual revolution. And we now invite things into our homes with television and movies that we used to be appalled by. And now we celebrate those because we didn't realize it was the enemy doing those things. So know the truth, know the enemy. And then as he advised us in this passage, know how to pray. How are you going to know what to pray for if you don't know the truth? How are you going to know what to pray for if you don't know what the enemy's up to? So we need educated, biblically, spiritually, and even with some worldly wisdom to be a little streetwise and know what the enemy's up to. So we need to get involved in that because that's a part of alertness. When I have the right kind of education, I know that's the devil. I know that's evil. I know what to stay away from. I know what to fight against. So we need to get involved in spiritual education. Then we need to get involved with just some spiritual attention. Uh, you may know all that you need to know. You may have learned all the facts. You may have been a Bible scholar and, and you've been studying it for years and you, you know you've got a good handle on what it says. But if you're not paying attention, you don't even know when to use it. You don't get in the battle because you didn't realize there was one. You've just been busy gathering knowledge and information. We need to watch out for that lion that's out there. We need to be aware that he's there and then be alert. That's, that's our message today. Stay alert. Look out the window. Look out with eyes of understanding. Pay attention to what's going on. We have parents who don't have a clue what their kids are being taught in public schools. And much of that over time is becoming evil. It's agendas. It's not real information or it's not information that needs to be taught in the public system. Our young kids don't need to be confronted with a lot of the stuff that's being forced upon our teachers now to teach and to spread. And our parents don't even know about it. You know that even when they become teenagers and they go off to college that many children of faith lose their faith? A very strong percentage, I don't know what the current one is, but it's way too high lose their faith, or at the very least get very shaken in their faith. And the reason is they don't really know what they believe. They haven't had the right education, again, spiritual education. And then they go off to the secular schools where we don't even have a clue what they're being taught. For instance, the one I mentioned when I was in Memphis in the 90s. Uh, 80s, I'm sorry, mentioned Memphis in the 80s. And, and I thought about these 18 and 20 year olds as they came in there and they're scratching their heads and they're looking at one another, but they're scared to death to speak up. Did they realize it was evil to teach those things and to learn those things? Do the parents have any idea or do we care? Do we just send them off to the public system anyway? There are good Bible colleges that you can get a liberal arts education in but be underneath teachers who believe in Jesus Christ, who believe in the Word of God, and teach from that perspective. And it's just as valid and just as strong, but the world 
And again, I go back to one of the messages. Understand, when you take a stand, according to God's word, you will also be against the world. That lion is roaming out there to devour your children, and you're sending them into his arena unarmed, uneducated in spiritual matters, and too young to handle it, and we dismiss them and then wonder why they leave the faith? We're not paying attention. We just woke up one day and God was kicked out of our schools and the Bible was not allowed anymore and biblical principles were no longer taught and you can't have, uh, you can't carry your Bible and prayer's not allowed. That didn't happen overnight. We just weren't paying attention and we allowed it to happen. We were asleep at the wheel, so to speak. We need to watch out for that line and we also need to work for the Lord. We need to pay attention to opportunities. We need to pay attention to uh, where we can step in. We just had the, the message last week about our spiritual weapons, and they weren't just all defensive. There were times we need to be on attack with the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, and we need to work for the Lord and pay attention to opportunities. The Bible tells us to make the most of every opportunity. And we have opportunities to witness, and we have opportunities to teach, and certainly we have opportunities to gather together. Even with COVID, there are still ways to gather together. You can take opportunities online, but you can also have some Bible study groups, and some of our churches are equipped to be able to meet in person like we are uh, under certain conditions, and that we might share with one another and equip one another. Take advantage of those opportunities to do work for the Lord. Pay attention to what's going on around you. Yes, a lot of it's negative, and that's the spiritual battle. But pay attention when you can attack. Notice the times where somebody's ready to listen, where somebody's curious. Peter, in another passage, said that we need to always be ready to give an answer for the reason for the hope that is within us. Now, that phrasing of the passage, that always be ready to give an answer, doesn't that suggest to you that somebody's asking a question? That somebody's wanting to know the reason you have that kind of hope? The point being, if I live out my faith the way that I should, somebody somewhere is going to take notice of that and wonder about it. And ask and say, how come when there's a funeral in your family, you don't get quite as shook as other people do? Because like when my mom passed away, she was immediately with the Lord in heaven. What's there to get shook about? She had a tough life. She was sick. She was hurting. We rejoiced that she got to go to heaven. I'm a little jealous. She's already been there for seven years, and I'm still having to mess with the spiritual warfare. It doesn't mean we don't grieve and we don't have sorrows and losses, but we have a different perspective because we understand the future. That's an opportunity when people ask those questions. How come you didn't get shook when you had a triple bypass? How come your wife handled that so well? Because we know the Lord and we know we're in his hands. And so you get the opportunity to share that with people. That we're not shook. That we're not living in fear of the COVID. We respect it. We, we take some precautions. But we don't have to fear it. God's in charge. And even if it gets me and takes me out, so what? I'm going to heaven. That's what I've been looking forward to anyway. So we work for the Lord and pay attention to opportunities to share that, to teach a lesson, to speak up. We're going to have a a lesson on that next. And so that's an area that we need to be involved in is just our attention areas, that God would open our eyes to see the opportunities. Watch out for the lion and fight him when you can and avoid him when you can. Fight the battles with the Lord's weaponry, with his strength and power. But watch for those opportunities and do it. That's why a lot of people don't see that we're in a spiritual warfare. They're not even paying attention. We need the education, but then we need to be attentive with that and use it when the time's right. And so the third area I would also suggest is what he suggests here, and that's prayer, intercession. Intercession. It's not enough just to know and and to do even, but I need to be praying. That's why Paul called for it. He said, pray for me. Pray for all the saints, first of all. Pray for them. They're in the battles. They're in the warfare. Or, like in our first message, we talked about how we're not even alert to it, so many aren't even in the battles. Pray that they would be. We need help. God doesn't really need our help, but he's chosen to use people. 
and he's chosen to have his armies. And since we have far more than are fighting, it would be smart to get them involved. Let's pray that others would join us and get active, that they would get involved in the education process to get spiritual information, to build up their knowledge of Jesus and their experience with Jesus and to know their Bible and to know how to fight the enemy. Pray for people that they would pay attention, open their eyes to see the struggle that's going on around. Open their eyes and hearts to see the fact that the very lives of their children, the eternity of their children and grandchildren is at stake if they don't do more to fight these spiritual battles. And we need to pray for one another. Pray for all the saints, he said. And then he said, pray for me that I might have boldness to speak. So really he's talking about pray for success. Pray that we win these battles. Pray that Paul take advantage of every opportunity. I mean, he's got a Roman soldier he's chained to. That's a captive audience for Paul. It's, pray that I would be bold enough to speak to this guy. And it's hard for me to imagine that he wouldn't be, but he's asking for the prayers. And I would echo that as a minister, as a pastor. That you would pray for me that I would have the boldness and, and the attention to see the opportunities and seize those opportunities to share the gospel or even to share with a Christian who's weak in the faith or needs some more information and education to get in the battle. That I would see that and do that and follow through and do it successfully. So I have to be prepared. You have to be prepared because an opportunity will come your way. And if you don't have the answers, if you don't know the Bible, if you've not been willing to get involved, they get hurt as well. They've been brought into your life for the moment even, if not for a long time possibly with family and friends. But they're your friends. They're your classmates. You work with them. And God has placed them into your position of life so that you might be effective with them on a spiritual level. That you might lead a lost one to salvation and get them on the winning team, on God's side. That you might take one who's saved but doesn't know a lot and disciple them and impart some of the things you've learned in life through the Bible and through a relationship with Jesus so that the battle would go better for them. Because they don't know about the weaponry. They don't know about God as a source of strength. They think about him maybe as, well, I got saved, so I'm going to heaven. And in the meantime, life is a mess. Because they haven't learned how to learn the scriptures and apply it to practical living on a daily basis. And certainly not to take a stand against Satan and his weaponry. But you could share that. And we need to pray for success that as we share the gospel, somebody gets saved. As we disciple, somebody begins to grow. As we lead by example, somebody begins to follow that example and gets involved in the spiritual warfare, begins to learn enough that they might also share, that they might also teach, that they might become preachers, that they might become ministers of the gospel. And, and certainly God has called all of us to the ministry, whether it's your vocation or not. Christianity is your vocation according to the scriptures. And so we need to pray, not just pray for saints in general, but pray for success as we put our faith into practice. Pray that we might be used by God to convert souls, that we might be used by God to uh, confirm their salvation, that we might build them up and help them to be stronger, that we might be used of God to impart wisdom and knowledge from the Bible that we might partner up with these people because we want them to stand side by side of us in spiritual warfare and they need to be equipped. You don't want your fellow soldier to be a weak link here because you need to be focused on the battle and not constantly dealing with them. We need to strengthen them, encourage them. Pray for success. Paul said, pray for me that I could share the gospel and do it effectively, that I could be bold, and that I could persevere and keep at it until God brings the fruit of it. And in many cases, that would mean to pray for salvations. What better way to defeat the enemy than to make them friends? What better way to defeat the enemy than to get them saved and get them on God's side? We could lead them to the Lord. Let's pray for salvations. Let's pray for the people that you and I know that 
All indications are they don't know Jesus. They may know about Jesus, but they don't know him personally. That puts them on the enemy's side, whether they want to be or not, whether they realize it or not. They're not on God's side if they don't know Jesus. Let's pray that they might get saved. Even those who are actively on the enemy's side, and that's what they like, and that's what they've sold out to, and they're for all of these other things besides God's truth. They've chosen not to believe in God. They've chosen not to follow the scriptures. They've chosen to write it off as not true. They're not involved. And by choice even, that doesn't mean they're unreachable. It doesn't mean God can't break their heart with conviction and save them. But the Bible teaches that we need to uh, know who to accept as Savior. Romans chapter 10 tells us that we have to trust him. There's no other salvation except in Jesus, and, but he will honor that, and so we've got to tell them. You say, well, God's going to save them if he wants to save them, but he's chosen to use you. He's chosen to use me. And so as we do our thing and get involved in lives in spiritual warfare, let's pray that some of those people will get saved. Let's pray for success in the ministry. Let's pray for success in our witnessing. Let's pray for success in our raising of our own children and our church children. Let's pray for success as we do the various things that we're called upon to do as Christians. Reaching out to minister to and to evangelize and to develop people. And let's pray for all the saints to do it. Paul called specifically for for prayer for him but said pray for all the saints too. And we need to pray for each other. We need to pray for our churches. This is a difficult time. It's a difficult time for our pastors to know exactly how to lead when we've got mandates, we've got rules, we've got laws, we've got different understandings. There's so much confusion. And that means that all of our people are facing the same things and we're called upon to lead them. Do we open up the church? Do we not? How much do we do? Uh, Do we do everything like we used to? What are the changes? And these are difficult times. We need to pray for each other. Pray for all the saints. You need to pray for me. I need to pray for you. I've always told our people, pray for me. I need the prayers and you need the practice. We need to pray. Intercession. Praying for others. So these three areas that I'm suggesting to you are, are vital for us to get involved in because we're supposed to stay alert. We're supposed to pray for each other and pray for all these things, but how do we even know what to pray for if we don't have the education of it and if we don't pay attention? And so education, attention, and intercession are three areas at least that we need to be more involved in because we're commanded and need to be alert. We need to know what's going on. We need to know who we are in Christ and what that means to our lives and the power that it brings and the weapons that it brings. And then know the enemy so we know how to fight and know how to bring God's power into the situation so that lives can be changed and we'll pray for all of that, as the Bible tells us. And speaking of prayer, I'll pray for you right now. Father, again, we thank you for your scripture that teaches us the truth, that reveals you to us, uh, reveals the enemy to us, tells us about the things that we need to build into our lives so that we might uh, not only stand against the evil but be effective in defeating it, that we might be effective as you use us to change people's lives. And so we pray for one another, uh, that we would see the wisdom to learn, to open our eyes and hearts and minds to what's going on and to pray for one another and lift one another up as we all get involved then. Help us be alert and stay alert. Not like the disciples who slept in the garden and were devoured by Satan for the moment. But as Peter later learned, you got to stay alert. The devil is real. God, help us stay alert that you might use us to fight. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.